And here we go, folks. Match two coming in with Tyler currently opening up with a 1-0 advantage in this best of three series versus his opponent, Strelok. Now, Strelok had some excellent drop play in the last encounter. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. And here we go, folks. In the blue trunks, up to the northeast of this particular map, I bring you the one and only Liquid Tyler, currently one up in this best of three series, versus his opponent. Yes, indeed, it's the Imba Strelok. He is in the red trunks and he is to the southwest. Now, Tyler's opening there was a little bit risky, but certainly it paid off, there's no question. He was able to suppress Strelok quite nicely. However, Strelok was able to come back from that with some excellent drop play and some marine aggression in the previous encounter. However, it was not quite enough to bring Tyler down. And once the Colossus was on the field, he was unable to respond to that quick enough. And a four Colossus attack at the front was able to bring down Strelok, who was relying on forcing his opponent back into his base and keeping him there to prevent any kind of drop harassment. It didn't work out, unfortunately. Tyler said he'd had enough. He charged in, and the defenses of Strelok were not quite enough to deal with it. We'll see what he decides to do this time around. Strelok once again going for this wall off at the front of the base. It's not a massively popular strategy against Protoss. It certainly does work. The risk is that you can have your supply depots picked off quite nicely by, say, Void Rays, which we saw in the previous encounter. Strelok the Barracks coming up right here. And Tyler, as always, really, he tends to go for the gateway on 13 supply. Likes to keep his economy going, likes to just continue to chrono boost probes throughout this period. Gets things up quite nicely and primarily last game was actually a one base play by Tyler, which was fine. It did the job. He knew what he was planning on doing. He eventually transitioned out of it and of course transitioned into getting harassed horribly by Strelok. But that perhaps wasn't quite in his plan, but it's Strelok. He had to expect that. Scanner coming in right here from Liquid Tana, and we'll see what he can see. And this time, Strelok with a different opening. Considering the map, it makes sense. Last map, Strelok went for a no-gas expansion very early on into the back of the crevasse. On Zelnaga Caverns, that's not really so much of an option. He's going to open up with the refinery right here. We'll see what kind of play he goes for. Could be expecting maybe some kind of three barracks stim timing push, perhaps. All sorts of things could actually happen in that regard. A lot of flexibility in this build. He could end up going through 1-1-1, maybe some harassment with Banshees. We'll find out. And Tech Lab going down initially. So either we're going to see some early Marauder player or we're going to see maybe a Reaper fast expansion right here from Strelog. Certainly the gas count is looking extremely likely in that regard. Now in the meantime, what are we going to see from Tyler? Cybernex caught on the way, pylon at the back as well. Nothing too unusual from Tyler as of yet, and yes, there we go. There's the Reaper fast expansion from Strelok. So what's he, what he's going to do is he's going to use that Reaper to acquire scouting information, harass his opponent, and use it to cover his expansion, try and keep scouts away, and that's incredibly useful. It's a good play right here, and there's the command center coming down right here for Strelok on 20 supply. It is nice and early, starting off at the four-minute mark. He should be able to gain a good economic advantage over his opponent if he can turn that straight into an orbital command center. In the meantime, Tyler sitting on one gate with the time being, and this is one gate robotics right here. Once again, this could also lead into a fairly early expansion. What that's going to give him is an observer nice and early on in the game, so he's going to gain great scouting information. Of course, if he needs to get out a quicker model, he can do that. And usually they'll add on two more gates on one base if they happen to be doing that. Second barracks coming up right here. The stim is on its way. Obviously, the stim was a little delayed, not a huge amount, though. He could still do some great stim aggression. Second gateway coming down right here could, of course, be the two gateway robotics variation if he's looking to get fast colossus. We'll see whether or not that ends up being the case. Command center almost complete right here for Strelok, and we do have another barracks coming up as well. So it will be a three barracks push. Not pushing out with the Marauders, however. He's actually going for Marines, and he's going for a little bit of a defensive bunker right here. But I also expect some bunker play down here. He needs to defend against any kind of aggression from Tyler. The thing is, Tyler is not playing all that aggressive at all. Two gateways now into three gateways. Reaper on its way, and great information he's actually getting from this. Be able to see pretty much everything. A little bit of harassment going on at the back as well. Oh, nice force fields. There you go. Tyler grabs that one and the Reaper ain't getting out of there in a hurry. Factory coming down right now as well for Strelok. Looking rather good at the moment. Army supply count is slightly in favor of Tyler, which is to be expected at this stage. Once Strelok's production really gets rolling, it should be fine. But it's, notice he's going purely Marine here. That's fairly unusual. Obviously, if we were to go for any kind of timing push, we'd want to accompany it with Marauders most of the time. As it turns out, he's not doing that. 
No reactors on any of them, so he wants to make sure that he can get out some early Marines before he spends the time building those. Of course, reactors do take 50 seconds to complete, so that's a significant chunk of time where you're not actually building any units. That can always be a bit problematic. Tyler pushing forward with a primarily sentry composed force, and Nexus coming down for Tyler as well, scouted very nicely by Strelok. Strelok scouting this entire game has been very, very good indeed, and also notice he is actively scouting for proxy play. Very common on Zelnaga caverns, extremely common to do that. It's not happening for the time being. Double Forge coming up for Tyler as well, going in for the upgrade heavy long game approach. SCP manages to make its way in again against all odds. God knows how it managed that, but that's some fantastic scouting information. The Observer's been out for a very long time right here, but here's the swap around. Now the interesting thing about this is that Tyler actually saw the factory attached to the reactors. Now, the funny thing is he didn't do anything with that, and then I have to wonder if he noticed the Observer moving. Of course, you can see that very slight shimmer. And he then swapped around and he's going for a heavy medivac plate with pure marine composition. That's very interesting considering he's also not building an engineering base, so he's not accompanying this with any kind of weapons upgrade. Now, one would think that that would be a good idea, especially considering Tyler is going with a double upgrade approach, ground armor and ground weapons on the way. His army supply count is slightly behind Strelok, but bear in mind the amount of force fields and more to the point, the amount of Guardian Shields he can put up there. He should be able to keep Guardian Shield up pretty much through the entire engagement. And Strelok is still lacking Combat Shield, but this is going to be a timing push based around that. In the meantime, however, Tyler does not want that to happen. And there's the force field divide. Nice catch. He's able to nail down at least six Marines already, and this attack has been blunted. However, Strelok is now looking to follow this up with a drop play, and Tyler hasn't seen that one coming. He's on a few sentries pulling back right here. However, he can get aggressive to this area. He's also, once again, looking for another attack avenue. He could go through here. He could start getting his way through. However, that's been denied very nicely there by Liquid Tyler. No drops for you, Strelok, I'm afraid, for the time being. Of course, he doesn't even have to make his way through those rocks if he uses that medivac. He should be able to drop down there. However, Tyler is prepared for it by the looks of it and moving to intercept. Should be able to deal with this drop fairly well. I can't imagine this is going to do a huge amount of damage as Tyler moves to respond to this. And this is the follow-up, however. Tyler is hanging around there, and he's faking out a drop at the front, as you can see. He's going to sacrifice the medevac so that he can get another one in the back. In the meantime, as you can see, uh, the force field play slices apart the forces of Strelok, and that was nicely denied. However, we do have a drop at the back once again, and this is going to get really messy for Tyler if he's unable to deny these drops. Tons of damage being laid down right here on the economic line of his opponent. Absolutely fantastic play right there. That entire minimal line is getting completely murdered at the moment, and that is not what Tyler was looking for at all. Huge amounts of damage being inflicted, and look at the difference. 51 SCVs to 28 probes right now, as Tyler is on the back foot economically. They're still on the same number of bases, but that doesn't really matter so much, since that entire line is pretty much gone. His gas mining has become significantly weaker as a direct result of that. He's got nothing in that assimilator whatsoever. In the meantime, Twilight Council on the way up for Tyler, now complete. Now, Tyler does have a very significant upgrade advantage right now. He's got plus one, plus one. His army supply count is certainly in his favor. The point is, can he do any damage? What Strelok likes to do is to keep his opponent from attacking him by continued drop harassment. Right now, it's not happening. Start looking to expand, take his third base down here, as opposed to taking his gold. We'll find out just how effective that really will be. And we've also got an armory on the way up, so he is looking for more upgrades. But right now, he's only researching one infantry upgrade at a time. It's going to take a very long time for him to catch up with his opponent, Tyler, who's already half his way through ground and ground armor level two. Weapons and armor, there you go. And the Zealot charge ability coming up as well. Very sensible play there by Tyler, and if he's able to build up the army composition he needs, he should be in a good position. My concern is that because of Strelok's significant economic advantage, he's not going to be able to build up as fast as he hopes. Strelok with a third right there, and a planetary fortress. Refinery coming down right here for Strelok as well. Going to be upgrade heavy, no question. Even he's actually pulling in ship weapon level one as well. Makes sense on the Vikings. However, Tyler's not getting his Colossus up right now. He does have his Robotics Bay, but this is very late in the game for him. Of course, you remember the previous game, it was over and done with by that point with Colossus up, but these double upgrades are going to prove to be very difficult for Strelok to deal with. He's only just started Infantry Weapon Level 2. He's going to have a long time before that comes into play. Now, what Tyler really needs to do now is to 
effectively deal with these drops. <coughs> and if he can nail the drops down quite nicely, he can get in with a very vicious counter-attack. These zealots with the plus two, plus two, plus the charge are going to be incredibly hard for Strella to deal with, even with this bunker placement. There's a lot of Vikings on the field for Strollock, which is interesting considering there are no Colossus up yet, but he is building in preparation for it. And by the time our Colossus gets out and starts to menace his base, he's going to have ship weapon level 1, which is really handy for Vikings for obvious reasons since they have two attacks. They benefit from the upgrade very nicely. They also get that bonus plus armor. Strollock now looking for the drop once again, and Tyler has good positioning on the Stalkers. Strollock's going to have difficulty. However, Tyler actually pulling back right now. I have to wonder if Strollock saw that. He may deliberately be doing this, in fact, for, to try and lure Strollock in for a nasty, unpleasant attack. Now, I would say this would make sense if Tyler had Blink, but he doesn't. So his response time is going to be a little low. Mobius Reactor on the way up for Strollock as well, so we're going to see some Ghost Play pretty shortly. Now, let's have a look at the state of the economy while we're waiting for this drop to inevitably happen. You can see it right there on the visual display, the minimal count firmly in favor of Strollock. His work account is looking good. Now... Tyler has rebuilt very nicely, but of course he's had to dedicate a lot of resources to doing that, so his army supply is not as good as it should have been. He had an army count advantage over Strelok earlier, he doesn't anymore. Tyler's got what he needs. An observer moving out right here, Tyler checking out the presence of these two dropships, which actually haven't done anything for the moment. Strelok's cleared out his gold as well, so he's looking to expand to a fourth, and right now no sign of an exit from Tyler at all, he's just sitting on two bases. Looking for these upgrades, he's looking for ground armor level 3 right now as well. He's not going into ground weapon level 3. Level 2 ship weapon on the way up as well for Strelok. 10 Vikings on the field. Those three Colossus shouldn't be able to handle that many Vikings, I would think. And without Blink Stalker as well, tearing them out of the sky is going to be a little tricky. I'm actually kind of surprised he hasn't gone for Blink Stalker, but especially since he has 18 Stalkers, that is very surprising. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to get an engagement in the middle right here as Strelok rolling out, as is Tyler's Ball of Doom right here. These charged Zealots are going to be very unpleasant for Strelok to deal with. The question is, will he decide to drop behind it in the meantime? Tyler is ready with the interception if that actually ends up happening. Tyler looking for a flanking maneuver right here. There are ghosts in the mix right now, so we are looking for some good EMPs. The question is, where are they? He hasn't landed any just yet, and that's a lot of Colossus firepower raining down on Strelok right now. No EMPs available at all. Not good, not good at all, as the forces of Strelok are actually collapsing right here. Will he have enough to clean this up? He certainly will not. The Colossus remains alive, and that Viking count didn't really help at all. Tyler's able to... Get his way through that force very easily. Army supply count is rebuilding in the background, however. The production capabilities of Strelok shouldn't be underestimated right now as he prepares to receive another attack. Tyler pushing forward all the way. He doesn't really have that Colossus support. He's only got one this time around. Viking moving out. Tyler needs to intercept that Viking immediately. Taken out almost immediately by Tyler. Nice shot there. Level 3 ground armor on those things. The Marines are going to do basically nothing. Especially with the Guardian shields up. However, he doesn't have any sentries in the mix. They were picked off quite nicely. Ghosts really need to come into play this time around as Tyler decides he wants to go and harass the third base, which is not happening. In the meantime, we've got the drop play coming in, and Strelok now with a plus two weapon. Big damage coming in. Can he take out that Colossus before he gets cleaned up? More to the point. And Tyler, of course, distracted by that. It's a good push. It's a very good push. Strelok snipes it up, and in the meantime, plenty of damage coming in from Strelok. He needs to bring down these Stalkers very, very rapidly indeed. Takes down one medivac, one still in the air, however, an additional warp in. And here's the push right now into the third base. However, Strelok is ready for it, and the interception coming in with mass marauders from the side, and Tyler sent packing. Great play there by Strelok, and a really good defense. He needs to bring down that Colossus before he does EMP in the middle. It's a good one. The shields are all taken down and cleans up nicely. Strelok with great momentum right here. Fantastic defense, as you can very clearly see. Tyler looking to get back in there, but his army supply count is absolutely pathetic in comparison to his opponent, who's sitting now on 18 Marauders, looking for plus three infantry weapon, and he has ghost support as well. He's cracking his way through those gateway units very nicely. These two main forces have completely missed each other. Tyler with a small harassment force. Will that be enough with repairs? It might not be. But bear in mind, there's a lot of firepower coming in. He needs to mass repair that. Planetary Fortress should be able to hold. In the meantime, Strelok deciding he does want to go and clean up and looks for the interception. That's a quick blink there by Tyler. He doesn't really have an awful lot going for him right now. He will get flanked. He will be eliminated. Although I'm actually quite surprised Strelok decided not to simply go for the third of Tyler, which is completely undefended. Never mind. He has a single Marine going for it. That's all he needs. Strelok right now uh, needs to defend against this immediately. He needs a couple more Marauders in that mix. Those charged Zealots doing a huge amounts of damage. 
Should be able to eventually pick that off, and in the meantime, we do have the attack on the front. Now, will Tyler be able to hold this? The army supply's not looking good. GG, ladies and gentlemen. There you go, and Strollock is back in it. What a piece in the best of three series.